Hey folks and welcome back to Shaggy's Car Shop. On tonight's episode, uh, we finally got everything kind of put together. And my belt on here, it's holding nice and tight. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll explain. Uh, a few folks asked me for some measurements and things like that. So I guess without any further ado, let's get after it. So this belt ended up being 91.8 inches. Um, it's just a cheapo from AutoZone. I plan on getting a, uh, a better one and keeping this one as a backup. Um, but I actually, I used some string in here, wrapped it all through, held my uh, tensioner pulley down, and I think it came out to like 91 and something. It was close. Um, I went to the parts store, got a couple of belts. They were too short. Um, went back, brought them back and returned them. I was actually shooting for a 92 inch belt, but all they had, or the longest one they had, uh, close to that was 91.8. And it just barely shimmied on here. And yeah, everything, uh, everything turns. And it seems to be pretty, Pretty square. Um, I've turned the engine over a couple of times slowly um, and everything rides pretty much right on the pulleys as I want. So let me get some of this stuff off of here and then I will uh, go over what parts I used and some measurements quick and then hopefully if any of you guys are trying to do this yourself at least you guys got a way forward. All right, folks, now for some measurements. So this plate is 3 8 thick steel, and it originally started life as a 24-inch wide by 7-inch tall piece of plate steel. That's what I had laying around. Um, let's see, I wrote some measurements down here. All right, now for my center cutout so i i found center of this plate which will be 12 inches and this gap right here is seven inches wide and then from the bottom edge going up i went up five and a half inches which should leave about an inch and a half up here now again i got to clean all of this up so that's how i started now on the back side I don't know how well you guys can see it, but these are some 7 16 inch, inch spacers. And then I welded them on a small chunk of this 3 8 uh, plating that I cut out. And that makes the total distance from right here, which is the surface where the water pump mounts to and your timing cover, this flush surface right here, the outside edge of this is two and a quarter inches out. Now, again, I don't know what water pump this is because I bought it long, long ago. But with my little uh, small block Ford pulley, that put my belt far enough that I felt comfortable out away from it. And then again, with this 30 Ford um, crank pulley, it actually lined these two pulleys up perfectly. So moving on to some other spots on here. Um, this small pulley that is over here, hang on, let me grab the part number for you. This one right here, this small one, is a Gates 36173, okay? Now for the guts of it, I actually pulled the guts, this spacer, and the bolt out of my bigger pulley that mounts right there. That part number is a Gates 36299. So these were able to give me the spacing I needed for my belt alignment and the bolt. 
So the smaller pulley is seven and one eighth from this edge over here to the center of the hole and two and three quarter inch down. Now that's pretty close, not 100% because I'm using a tape measure. Um, moving on to my 45 degree cuts. Basically is what I did is I come over two inches from my seven inch gap that was centered and just did a 45, drew it on there, cut it off. Moving down over here to my tensioner pulley. So this is, this edge right here is two and a half inches over from this edge right here. I had to cut this one back for the water pump, or excuse me, the power steering pump. So I measured off of over here, two and a half inches over, and it is roughly three and three quarter inches down. And it is just more of that three ace steel plate. And again, I gotta clean up my welds and finish welding it on the back side. Moving over to that bigger pulley. Um, the reason I didn't go with a smaller pulley, like on this side, was because this bolt was in the way. And that's the 7 16 inch bolt that goes back through that spacer. This one and this one. Um, and that pulley actually rides over this bolt. So that's why I use that little bit bigger one. And it is six and three eighths from this edge and two and a sixteenth down. And that's where I mounted that one. Uh, let's see. Hmm. This one is two inches down from the top edge before I welded this on. Up here for the other alternator bracket. And gosh, I didn't even measure how far in it is. I just kind of eyeballed and set it up on there. Um, I would say it's about a quarter inch in to the edge of the bolt hole. So let me see here. Looks like it's about the center of that bolt. It's a half inch in. And I didn't take any measurements on this. I just had the alternator hanging up here and saw where it was hitting. And I just took that spot off. Now this um, other bracket up here is three and five eighths inch tall coming off the top edge of this um, and again I just held my alternator where I wanted it tightened down this bolt and I built a cardboard template and then cut that out of steel and welded it on and that's all I got for that one down here for my air, air conditioning pump this actually comes out three inches and it was one solid piece and on that previous video, I made that template from that um, Sandin style pump. I think it's a 508. I don't know. I'll look it up. I'll put it down in the description. But I made that template. And I got this bolt started. Cut it out. And then got this one. And then hopefully, hopefully, when this goes into my Firebird, I don't have to move this. But I may. And that brings me over to this other small pulley. I didn't measure this. All I did was hold it up and make sure I had enough belt clearance beside this bolt to run back down to the crank. And that also gives me belt clearance over this uh, water inlet coming into my water pump. So that's the reason I did that right there. So now I have clearance over this so I can hook my hose and come right out to my radiator where I want to. Um, let's see here. Moving on to my power steering pump, um, that one I just kind of eyeballed, honestly. I used that hole saw, I think I mentioned it in the video, but I used that hole saw and then zipped this down to kind of clear this notch down here. Um, and again, let me get around the other side. So back in there, those are three eighths uh, inside diameter by one inch spacers. And that gave me the distance off of the front of this plate to get this right aligned where I want to. And then when you install your pulley, you just got to line everything up. And then, of course, I have this back bar in here. I don't remember the distance on that. I think I had it close 
and then I just welded that on um, and again over on this side I kicked it that way because I knew I was putting a power steering pump in here there's another oh let me get the stuff out of the way you can barely see it but there's another bolt right there off the main uh, block you could flip that around and use that one I decided to use that one because that's what I did so I realistically have two seven sixteenths over here and one three eighths bolt holding this to the front of the block but none of it is mounted to the heads um, as of right now I have to finish on the back of this uh, air conditioning pump I got to build another bracket and it's going to come up right there because it's kind of long and I don't want all that weight holding off the back of this. Um, let's see. Some of the other things I did. So for my alternator, you can kind of see them. I got to get them cleaned up and finish welded in. And the back of the air conditioning pump right here and right here, I welded on quarter inch, uh, spacers i just had some quarter inch steel laying around and that got me the distance i needed from the front side i wish i would have measured my belt but i want to say it's like let me grab a tape measure it is like three sixteenths of an inch give or take off the front of this plate so i got room for the belt to wiggle and not worry about hitting this plate um yeah i think that's about it um and again the belt when i finally got one that fit it was 91.8 inches and again if i do have to move this obviously that'll change where my belt is this bolt cleared amazingly so i didn't even need to find those other ones even though i got them um if i gotta move that that'll change the belt but i should have enough space to still maintain where my uh lower radiator hose comes out and on this side i can still see my timing marks um yeah that's about it and i'm sorry guys on this um a lot of these measurements i kind of uh don't want to say winged it but i winged it um like this one it just happened to fit where it fit this one happened to fit where it fit once i got my power steering pump on there i was like well I need to figure out how to get this on where I want that so my belt comes back around this one just kind of went where it went as close to this bolt as I could just to save space if I had to move my air conditioning pump and then the alternator was my last thought it uh, being the last thought and I didn't want to it's close. It's got room in, in between the head and whatnot, but I still have wiring and stuff, so that's why I kind of hung it out here rather than bring it back. But yeah. So the last few things I got to do on this, I don't know if I'm going to do another video because I don't feel like putting all this stuff back on here again. Put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off. But the last video I may or may not do is just going to be cleaning this stuff up. Um, when this gets all pretty kind of do a, a final video for this um another thing i gotta do is clean up my shop i gotta move that volkswagen off into a corner which means i gotta clean even more of my shop but hopefully the firebird will be back here in a couple of weeks maybe around thanksgiving maybe a week or two after but i want to make sure i have room for that but i need to get this done so that way because as soon as the firebird comes back um it's gonna be all ahead full i already have my bell housing and my clutch and things like that so i gotta get this big heavy engine off this engine stand and get it mounted to the transmission where it's gonna live hopefully for a long long time but i didn't want to do this part on the floor it was easier on an engine stand where i could work around things so maybe my next video might be more on this cleaning this up or it might be um setting up the clutch throw out bearing things of that nature or maybe i don't know a couple of uh random shots of me actually cleaning this garage Oof. 
All right, I'll be right back with you. Oh, one last thought, my uh, tensioner pulley. Um, so I was looking at this and I may change it still. I might change this. I don't know, I'd, I'd have to re-drill it and move it down like, like that, I don't know. But it seems to be holding my uh, belt pretty good. This part number is a Gates 39371. Come off of a, I don't know, a teens Chevy pickup, I think, with a 5.7. Um, but yeah, I think it works right where it is. And as far as the bolt hole for this, all I did was measure 45s off of both corners, center punch it, and drill that. And then I had to go buy a, uh, a metric bolt for it. It's a M10 by one. 5.0 or something like that. Whatever these metric bolts are, same as these pulleys, just a longer version. I just wanted to throw that in there because I forgot to mention it. All right, folks, that's it for tonight's video. Um, again, I hope you enjoyed kind of my method to my madness. I'm building my own serpentine system for one of these caddy motors. Um, I do have still a few things to do. I want to clean up a couple of these pulleys. Still have to order myself a uh, a non-used alternator because this is an old used one. Um, I got to finish up some of the welds and just basically clean some stuff up on it. Paint this, keep it from corroding because it is just bare steel, most of it. Um, but yeah, I'll, uh, I'll try and do a short or something when I get it all cleaned up and pretty looking, I guess. But... That's it for tonight, so thank you. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.